If you couldn't tell by the 20 minute cutscenes and the many character stories that we've grabbed, we're officially in a new phase of the game. Hey everybody, welcome back to more Triangle Strategy! I'm Slayer Matheson, last time we viewed a lot of cutscenes seeing how we will advance through all the difficulty with rebuilding Glenbrook, Broma, and Flanagan. But we could have picked him up before the previous battle. This time, we'll be viewing a bunch of character stories, but first, the things I want to take care of. Both of these have new items in stock. So, right now, uh, Lionel sells a lot of shit. He sells so now, um, lots of amulets, lots of necklaces, and as well as superior stuff, which is how you boost that level 3 stuff. And, of course, always more important, is all is archibalds. So first of all, just because I like having these, I'll eventually read through these on my own time probably. And all of these, we got a lot of things to boost us up. Think three. We also got a few medals of bravery. Got a medal of valor. Uh, might as well buy all the silver. Buy everything that we can in order to get up to. Her. Rank threes, and we can only buy two of these. Um, Ellie. Now, of course, that means that Yens have a lot of stuff available. Should be able to boost everyone up to rank two at least. Let's just do that. Uh, moment of truth, TP minus one, so good. You're going to be using moment of truth a lot anyway, so. Yeah, why not do that? And just boost up more people, boost up Medina, who, movement plus one is pretty nice. Yens, you can boost up that. As skill, it is either Spirit Trap or Constricting Net minus one. Flanagan, just to check out his tree, a lot of generic stat ups. He also gets uh, immunity to being knocked back and TP cost of aerial assault down. Uh, as for Lionel, he needs leather, and Groma also needs leather, which Archibald doesn't have. At least I would assume, yeah. So unfortunately, we'll not be getting those two up. Um, Again, bit of a shame on that end, but, uh, oh well. It's fine, Lionel's not great in combat, and Grimma could be nice, but, uh, well, we don't have any leather. So we can either get Flanagan or Benedict up, and I think I want to get Benedict up. Uh, Dragon Shield, pretty nice. Uh, Bird of Prey duration of that's not great, honestly. As for anything else, oh, that's what, magic attack up. That could be really good. Um, don't actually know what that one is. I'm just looking through these. Uh, I really do need to boost up Anna's damage. That's gonna be really important. Suet. Uh... That's extra range on her normal attacks, I believe, which is actually pretty nice. I like Huet anyway, so I'll grab a Curious Feather, and we also have room for one more, which I will use on... Um, what will I use that on, honestly? don't know. Let's see, maybe Archibald? I do like Archibald, he's pretty good. Or Zana. Zana could be nice. Zana could be really nice to get up. Nicoletta, some more damage, and another skill, Flanagan, nah. Yulio, just more damage. Hmm. I'll get, a, I'll get the parchment and the curious feather think that'll be my aim, so grab a parchment, grab a curious feather, and also just because, uh, we will 
promote up Corentin. Throw him up. I'm not yet satisfied. Icy Tomb. Uh, I think I've talked about these before, but Icy Tomb. Uh, magic type. Magic damage. To, it's a lot of damage to anyone on frozen tiles. Shield of Ice. Uh, yeah. Does that as for our Medal of Valor. Obviously, I'm gonna do Frederica. I love using Frederica. She's fantastic. Get her TP up. Always good. Uh, Magic Blades kind of sucks, but oh well. And Hewet, I will throw into her promotion. Probably next up will be Anna. Effort is rewarded. But at this point, I'm mainly using for the stat ups. So it's not too important. And last things up. Throw in that damage up. Throw in that up. And yeah, normal attack range up. I could probably afford to boost up. You know what? You know what? I meant to do character stories. Just did a lot of upgrades. Now we're going to do the character stories. So I'm not going to be talking too much for the rest of this episode. And this might be a very long episode because I want to go through all 16 of these. So yeah, let's start off with... Benedict and Eridor. Ah, oh, oh, oh dear. Okay. Uh... All right, lads and lasses, lay down your arms. Let your bruises remind you of the lessons learned today. Ah, what fortuitous timing. Owe you for the drinks from the other evening. I wondered if I might treat you tonight. Apologies, last, but I've got places to be. Perhaps another time. He seemed troubled by something. Perhaps I'm overthinking it. Let us end our day's work here. It is early, is it not? Is something amiss? No, nothing at all. Just my attention is required elsewhere for a time. Elsewhere? Curious. How many have you had? Not enough. Just one for you, I take it. Yes. Went by in a flash. Can you believe it's been 30 years? The time has escaped us. The memory of that day, however, I doubt ever will. Thrice damned, can't move. Always thought I'd meet my end with a beautiful lass by my side. You have many days ahead of you yet, Eridor. We will see you returned home. Don't try to run, you curs! Leave me be. I'll just slow you down. It was my cursed pride that got us into this. Only I should suffer for it. We don't all need to die today. Run! Even in the face of death, you refuse to set aside your foolish pride. I followed you into this hell of my own will, and I will see you delivered from it. <clears throat> you fool! Charge! Come, 
Come and die. Yeah. That would have been it for us, had Lord Simon not met their charge in time. Aye, and the only punishment for my pride were these aches that keep me awake at night. We hungered for glory all those years ago, without a care for how it would serve us later on. A couple of would-be heroes, who couldn't be convinced they weren't invincible. Yet here we are, drinking, to celebrate the end of that war. I do not wish to reminisce upon the past. A toast that I may never again repeat the mistakes of my youth. Ah, uh, but before that... Yeah? You have served House Wolfort well, Eridor. That said, I have a feeling we'll need your sturdy shield even more going forward. You need me to lead a charge? I'm your man. I'll leave anything fancier than that to you. For House Wolfort! For House Wolfort. I always love seeing the relationship between Eridor and Benedict because they don't always get along, but they're still friends. Let's see what Roland has to say about his life and existence. Roland, what are you doing out here? There's hardly a better place to become lost in one's thoughts, don't you agree? I suppose. However, if aught weighs on your mind, it may serve you better to turn to a friend. Then let me ask, do you believe me too immature for my station? Not at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. But the other nobles loved to gossip of my disinterest in politics and intrigue, and mocked my love of hawking. You said it yourself. Gossip and sniping, nothing more. Pay no mind to nobles and their petty judgments. The people who matter, your subjects, hold you dearly in their hearts. Stories abound of their love for you. Go peddle your junk somewhere else. And why would I do that, my good sir? I see no reason to forego such a bustling avenue simply to please a stranger. A stranger? You're posted in front of my damn shop. You're stealing my customers from right under my nose. Oh, I am? I'm not sure your lack of customers could be blamed on me. Surely the proprietor bears some responsibility for... What bickering is this? None of your business, Whelp. Now leave us to our negotiations. Prince Roland? Is that really you? A prince, you say? Well, I... A distinguished gentleman such as yourself must be mortified to have your customers bear witness to this childish bickering. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, your highness. My temper got the best of me. And you, merchant. If you mean to trade in Glenbrook, I trust you have procured the proper licenses and approvals. I... well, the process takes some days, you see. Pardon, your highness. Then your business shall have to wait some days, it seems. Shall I summon a member of the Kingsguard to explain the law in detail? N no, there'll be no need of that, highness. I'll just be on my way. Thank you, Prince Roland. 
Come visit any time, and I'll let you have your pick of my wares. Your place has always been with your people. You could walk down the main avenue and settle disputes with a single word. <laughs> Don't tell me you were watching. They were petty arguments, nothing more. As petty as they might have been, you were happy to do it. What better proof of royalty is there than that? But it wasn't because I was wise that I solved their problems. It was my name and status that let my words wait. Hmm. How do you imagine a kingdom with not a single dissatisfied soul would look? Hmm. That's a difficult thing to imagine. Indeed. I suppose the best one can hope for is to do what we can. While we can. Well... We can start envisioning such a nation, that one day we might build it, together. I like the sound of that. No doubt the answers we seek lie ahead, so long as we stay honest with ourselves. And so long as we work together, you and I, Saranoa. Roll is just such an interesting character because, you know, he does have that royalty about him, but also, he doesn't want to be a royal guy. But, it's his duty, and he just will make the most of it. Do you have a moment, Gila? Oh, Frederica, is something the matter? Well, I invited Saranoa to have dinner with me tonight. That's wonderful. Are you cooking for him? I am. I've been practicing with the book you gave me. I was hoping to finally show him what I've learned. Then allow me to help. What are you making? A warm soup full of meatballs. A hearty, meaty, savory stew to tickle the tongue and sate the stomach. Or so the book describes it. That sounds like quite a mouthful, in more ways than one. The author is rather verbose, yes. Anyhow, I also want to make an appetizer. Might you be able to lend a hand? Cooking is hardly my specialty, but say no more. I'd love to. Dear. This is disappointing, to say the least. And we're almost out of time. Saranoa will be back any minute now. Excuse me, Lady Frederica. Lord Saranoa has just sent word that he has been held up at a meeting. He says there is a chance he may not even return tonight. I see. Thank you for letting me know. It sounds like your dinner may get postponed. A blessing in disguise. It gives us time to cook this again and do it right this time. Lord Saranoa may not even return tonight. But there is a chance he might. And I refuse to disappoint him. Would you help me, Gila? Of course, Frederica. I shall do my very best to see this through with you. I cannot thank you enough. The vegetables are done, though they are a far cry from perfect. The meatballs are ready too. Now all we have to do is stew them. Frederica, I'm back. 
Oh, welcome back. It appears we've run out of time. I was on my way here when something urgent came to my attention. I apologize for returning so late. I know we were supposed to have dinner tonight. I am just happy you're here. Besides, I am the one who should apologize. I wanted to cook you a meal, but failed terribly on my first attempt, so it isn't yet ready. I'm sorry, Saranoa. Don't look so down, Frederica. I was delighted when you asked me to share a meal. Now that I'm back, why don't I help you with the food? Saranoa. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm overjoyed we could spend this time together. As am I. I enjoyed cooking with you as well. The time we spend together is very precious to me. I regret that my duties have been keeping us apart lately. But when I noticed the sky was even more beautiful than ever this night, I hurried home, hoping we could gaze upon its beauty together. It's strange. When I was in Esfrost, I would look up at the same sky. But it felt so much colder there. The stars seemed as if frozen. They did not twinkle the way they do now that I am with you, Saranoa. Frederica, <sighs> promise me that you will always stay by my side. I need you, now more than ever. Of course, Saranoa. I wish to gaze up at the same sky, sit beneath the same moon, and walk the same path you do. Together, forever and always. While well, Roland's character is the King of Glenbrook is cool and all. The relationship between Saranoa and Frederick is just too precious. Under this tree. This here's the land of the Jacks clan. Or used to be more like. That clasp on your chest, that's their sigil, if I'm not mistaken. It's a memento from my parents, or so I was told. Aye, now that I'm looking for it, I can see the resemblance. Same silvery hair and everything. Villages near here met with a pretty terrible fate. They begged the armies to spare their fields. The only one who listened was one of House Wolfort's bannermen. No one was surprised, big war hero that he was. But by the time we got here, the Jacks had been all but exterminated. He was digging graves for the dead, enemy and all. A hero and a gentleman he was. Names on the tip of my tongue. Benedict. Aye, that was it. Do you know the man? I'd like you to pass on my gratitude, if you do. Thanks for showing me the way. Your coin's all the thanks I require. If that's all you'll be needing me for, I'll leave you to it. You make a poor stalker. Ain't exactly what I'm built for. You fought in the battle here, didn't you? Benedict swore me to secrecy. But 
Suppose it ain't break an oath if you already know. Oh, but first I ought to tell you. You've the right to the truth. And those ain't my words. They're his. That's why he never tried to stop you from finding out about your parents. You know of their fate? We drove the enemy up the clifftop. Cornered him there. The same instant we cut their leader down, a babe cried out in the distance. In the hideout, we found you, all swaddled up. A letter pinned to you with that same clasp on your chest. <sighs> Live strong, Anna. Stronger than any. I see now. Your family died at our hands. If it's vengeance you want, you can take it out on me. That doesn't sound like the Eridor I know. Do you think so little of me? To assume I would forsake my friend, bloody my hands with revenge. I know the truth at last. That is enough. Is it, Anna? Or are you forcing it to be? Don't be a fool. Benedict is the one who raised me. If I ever want for a father, I know where to find him. And when we've won this war, I shall make sure he understands that. So the story improves. The story gets further and further on. Anna's own parents were seemingly killed by Veridor and Benedict, but still, she knows that her family is who raised her, not who her blood parents are. Again, eh? You know, even the Dawn Spear set down his weapon on occasion. We are at war. I cannot hope to end it by being idle. <laughs> Spoken like a true member of the King's Guard. You lot were always too serious for my tastes. We were not serious enough. Where is the king we were meant to protect now? What will become of his kingdom? <sighs> King Regna and Crown Prince Franny are no more. Only Roland and Cordelia remain. When I think of how lonely my charge must feel, I almost feel smothered by the guilt. If he's lonely, he hides it well. Could be that losing his princely obligations has lifted a weight off his shoulders. And who are you to speak on his feelings? His father ever doted on Franny. He knew precious few moments of his mother's love before she passed. Even so, he tried his utmost to never show weakness in front of his sister. He was there for her in the worst of times. There was never a place near the throne for him. Truth be told, Sir Maxwell was more of a father to him than anyone. I'd like to think I have been more than his guard. Oftentimes, I felt like his confidant. Flugi are constant companions. As I said before, my prince, he is more than my companion. He is the truest friend I could ask for. A true friend? I must admit, I envy your relationship. My prince, I did not mean to... Tis nothing to apologize for. I simply find the idea of soaring the skies with a true friend to be somewhat... Romantic. You could do the same with the proper training. If it pleases you, my prince, 
I would gladly teach you. You would? Then I gladly accept. I trust you will go easy on me. I can promise no such thing. You must become as ferocious as a hawk yourself if you wish to ride one. War broke out soon after that. My promise to teach him is yet unfulfilled. So I will train. I will fight. Until the skies are no longer clouded by the fires of war. Only then can I rest. Only then can we fly free. Perhaps then, with the wind in our faces, we can forget our stations, our titles, if only just for one moment. Uh, what was that last part? You'll have to speak up. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yes, it's back to training for me. I love the implication that Hewlett has a little bit of a crush on Roland. It's just nice and sweet. I don't know. I like it. It's become late. We best keep an eye out for bandits. You have a warrior's intuition. You needn't worry. I won't let us come to harm. It takes no great intuition to see that this world is falling ever deeper into chaos. The reasons, however, remain elusive. Will we see our way safely through this darkness? I cannot say. We have not but our duty, and mine is to Prince Roland, whatever might become of House Wolfort. I find your perspective refreshing. Although it may be direct, you walk the path you've chosen with confidence. On the other hand, I often feel that I'm fumbling. I had thought Gustadolf to be a man of reason. But now I see that he will not hesitate to employ deceit to achieve his goals. In a manner of speaking, he and I are not so different. I, too, once hoped to have the influence to change the nation. At least, I told myself so. Really, all I wanted was to be free. And Frederica was simply a means to that end. As long as I had what I wanted, I had no great concern for what became of her. Gila, I... But this war has caused me to reconsider that. I realize that Frederica herself is worth caring for. She's not the sheltered princess I took her to be. Her wits are a match even for Benedict. She surprised me and shamed me. I was wrong to underestimate her, to define her by her birth and station. She represents my greatest failures as a teacher, but also my greatest success. For she has truly taken my lessons to heart. I see now there is no shame in serving another, and no shame in sacrificing my freedom for something greater. Oh, but perhaps I've shared overmuch. For some reason, I find it easy to talk with you. The feeling is mutual. You are not so aloof as I thought. Ah! I just had a thought. When the war is behind us, I may very well open my own school. Of course, you would be welcome to join me. I would be master of the classroom, and you could be master of the training yard. We could teach our students the art of hawksmanship. Our riders would be first class. Ah, what should our school be named? You will come and teach with me, won't you? Not half so aloof as I thought.
you know, so just the kinmanship between uh, Gila and Kiwet is very nice. Very nice indeed. What's so urgent you can't let a man sleep? Nothing less than the completion of my groundbreaking research, Eridor. Oh, well now, that is something. Indeed it is. I've managed to thermodynamically stabilize the quasi-liquid film forming on the surface of the... Yes, yes, I've heard all that. Now tell it to me in words a man can understand. <sighs> right, well, in layman's terms, I have created ice that never melts. See how simple... Did you say ice that never melts? That's mighty impressive and all, but what actual good does that do anyone? My dear, sweet, simple Eridor, we can use my creation to forge weapons with no need for iron. Sounds useful, if it works as you say, but how's the durability? Silly soldier, you take me for a fool? Of course I tested their durability. Worry not. A prototype shall arrive shortly. I bid you try it out for yourself. For better or worse, you're the most experienced soldier I know. And so I'd have you handle it first. That sounds big and important. I reckon I'll take you up on it. What news? Surely it's finished by now. Afraid not. I come bearing unfortunate news from the smithy. It seemed plenty sturdy at first, but shattered the moment he took a hammer to it. He says it has a long way to go before it can be used in place of iron, I'm afraid. Preposterous! My calculations were impeccable! Surely I have not forsaken my homeland in pursuit of a fool's errand. That's all a bit dramatic, isn't it? You can't have a breakthrough without breaking a couple of ice blades. You know what would wash away all that pain? A nice cold glass of spirits. Uh, spirits? That's it! That unmelted ice of yours could chill him forever, could it not? Crown breaking indeed! This invention of yours could still take the world by storm. <laughs> and I reckon the army'd have use for it as well. It'd keep our rations from going off. <laughs> Weapons be damned. You've done very important work. The fact remains that my calculations were in error. So forgive me my reluctance to. Less sulking, more drinking. You succeeded, haven't you? Right then, this will be my treat, and I won't be turning in till you do. Very well. Scientific breakthroughs never come easily, I suppose. Perhaps my next experiment shall be seeing how many rounds my everlasting ice can chill. Right then, to the encampment of us. It is time for a drink or three. That's the spirit. Just promise me I won't have to haul your drunken ass home this time. I like how Corentin's a big nerd who also does really enjoy a drinker. Six. Or more. Go on, have another glass. I'm offering top shelf drink for bottom shelf prices tonight. No need to fret over your coin purses. See? This is why we keep coming back. Nobody treats us better than our Hasabar. Quite the crowd tonight, eh? Good to see it. All thanks to you for supplying me with that mead. Thanks to my good fortune, you mean. I got it for so cheap on account of the batch not measuring quite up to the brewer's usual standards. Still, look at how happy it's made them. 
There's nothing I love more than seeing my tavern full to bursting like this. Thank you, Arador. Truly. It's... it's nothing, honest. Ah, and just like that, they've nearly drank me dry. Might have to close up early tonight. Celebrating something, Asabara. <laughs> Whatever it is, we'll drink to that. Pour us around. I wish I could. Seems the barrels have run dry tonight. But if you'll come back on the morrow... Run dry? You've enough for these drunkards? You can't spare a drop for those of us who are risking our lives for you on the battlefield? Oh. Hey, who are you calling a drunkard? Don't you fools go spoiling the one spot of happiness we've had in a long while. Enough! My tavern's a place for forgetting troubles, not stirring them up. You do well not to look down your noses at the very people you've sworn an oath to protect. You want respect? Go out there and earn it by ending the war. Then there'll be drink a plenty to go around. You tell them, Hasabara. They're no better than us. You lot aren't blameless either, you know. These soldiers do put their lives on the line to protect yours. They get enough grief on the battlefield without you giving it to them off it. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. No, I, I, I shouldn't have let my temper flare. Look, there's still some drink left here. How's about you raise a glass together? Yeah. You can have some of ours, too. Well, don't mind if I do. Level head you've got on your shoulders there, Hasabara. It helped that you pitched in when you did. Ah, now that hits the spot. <laughs> doesn't it? Here, I'll pour you another. See? Now this is what I live for. Giving people a place they can come together and leave the worries of the world behind for a while. Somehow, I know this is what Theo would have wanted me to do. If only I could raise a glass with him. I... I reckon he'd be proud. You've made a spot of sunshine for people that don't get much of it these days. People like me. What with business booming again, it looks like I'm going to have my hands full for a while. Don't you worry for your mama, Theo. As long as there's ale to be poured and smiles on her customers' faces, she'll be just fine. Eridor and Hasabara, I ship it. Hasabara has such mom energy and it's great. Hasabara really is the team mom. Ha. Ah. You know what? I said I was gonna get through L16. I will go through these last eight next time because I don't want to have too long of a video of doing absolutely nothing. So I'll split into two long videos of doing absolutely nothing. But, well, that's it for now. And next time, if you hear the rest of those character stories, then maybe we advance some actual story stories. But until then, see you guys later.